Hey, good Tuesday afternoon. It's November 18th, just a little before 3 p.m. Eastern time. Michael Clark here with BAM Weather. And we're going to talk about the um, idea or the potential for uh, winter to arrive, right? Right around or after Thanksgiving and, and lasting really well into December. And uh, so it's been, I'm excited to come on and, and talk to you guys about this. Put out a map the other day talking about the potential for um, snow and a pattern that supports it. And it's certainly, everything's there, the writing's on the wall. A lot of people are asking for a video to um, describe plainly what we're seeing. So that's my goal today. Share it with a friend, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, we'll get right into it. This is a map we put out for snowfall risks late November heading into December. And we're already starting to see a lot of the model data kind of come around to the idea of a bigger snowstorm late in the month into the first couple of days of December. Whether it's going to be in, you know, Pittsburgh, Columbus, Indianapolis, or Chicago, you know, there's no way to know just yet, but we can look at pattern driver um, suggestions, techniques into the pattern, and it can tell us what to, what we might anticipate. This is our storm track indicator for the upcoming pattern and looking at cities that might be at play for accumulating snowfall risks at three inches or more. And we had some folks comment the other day, well, if, if, you know, there's a storm rolling through, um, Indianapolis, what would be the deal for, say, Columbus to be on the basically zero scale? Well, warm nose issues and, uh, cutters, storms cutting up into the, the Ohio Valley and into the lakes. But look at this, Indianapolis, Milwaukee, Detroit, Des Moines, close to Pittsburgh, two times, almost five times greater than normal risk. The likelihood versus normal here for Indianapolis actually ranking amongst the highest when we're looking at teleconnections like the Arctic Oscillation, the Pacific North American pattern, and the Western Pacific Oscillation to dictate the potential for accumulating snow. So we're certainly coming into a period where we believe we're going to be tracking multiple potential chances for snowstorms, right, and for cold weather outbreaks. Now, quickly here as we look just uh, where we are right now, uh, it is, again, just uh, almost 3 p.m. Eastern time here on the 18th. And we have a big storm system moving through, putting in some showers and thunderstorms here across portions of the Ohio Valley into the mid-Atlantic. You can see that here on Clarity. Some heavier rains even kind of coming through. Uh, and then what we're going to be looking for today is at least the potential for a few stronger storms, maybe even some tornadoes. Not out of the question here across southern Illinois, Indiana, western Kentucky, northwestern Tennessee. You can see that here in our our simulated radar product will slow that down for you so you can kind of see thunderstorm development may take shape here later this evening and it may come in the form of some storms that have the ability to produce some rotation some supercells as this moves off to the east um, you can see what it does again some areas some storms maybe on the stronger side maybe rotating here later today the forecast for rainfall the next 24 hours it's going to look like this in fact let me turn my legend on so you can see it It'll look like this in terms of how much rain is anticipated over the next 24 hours, heaviest being across northern Kentucky, getting into the portions of western Virginia. Not a ton in the way of snow. There could be a coating of snow up here across the upstate New York, um, maybe as much as a half an inch in some spots. All right. So what's going on in the pattern in general? Well, we'll look here to our friends at Tropical Tidbits. We'll look at the latest European AI weather model. And the reason we'll use this model in particular is because it's colder and we believe the pattern is more supportive uh, that the writing is on the wall for there to be a colder risk and the problem has been uh, we we've we've the models have had a hard time seeing short-term colder weather trends short-term colder weather outlooks they've just trended colder as we've gotten closer and the ai data is, seems to be handling this a little bit better and so we'll utilize that you can see some mid month uh mild risks we've talked about this for a long time brett's been talking about this for a while mild air working into thanksgiving for most of the country but a big storm system will start to get its act together closer to the 26th 27th of november start to spill in that arctic air in fact thursday for thanksgiving there's a potential that the arctic air is already coming east Wednesday could be met with a big storm system. Uh, the biggest, busiest travel day of the year could have a storm system with it. We'll, we'll talk about that here in just a moment. But the cold spills in. By Black Friday, it's spilt in at a great deal, reinforces itself here, getting into the start of December and looking out uh, into the first few days. 
And this has been consistent. There's been consecutive run now here, runs now here with the AI data indicating this, this cold dump incoming. The 6Z was even more intense and it was actually quite impressive. It arrived at the same time, brought a big storm with it right there. You see the warm air pumping up, cold wrapping on the backside, maxes out the departures from normal on the backside with a major Arctic blast and feels like temperatures below zero on the 3rd of December. Uh, but again, multiple runs have indicated this. We'll go over here to Synoptic Weather and we'll look at this. And uh, by the way, you all can access Synoptic for free right now. We're in the beta version of it. But I'll go over here and show you uh, kind of my thought process. Here's what I'm going to shrink this a little bit. Uh, so you can see what it is we're looking at in terms of this, this t the storm around that time. Okay. And again, here is when this is Monday, uh, the 24th. Okay, storm system rolls through. As we go through Wednesday, you can see the storm works off the coast on this particular run of the AI model. All right, cold air seeps in. You got these 540 thickness lines down to Oklahoma City to Memphis. Arguably, everybody's below freezing in the Midwest for Friday. As we continue to advance forward here, this is where the bigger storm and the reinforcing shot of cold air may start to take shape. Okay, this is the 29th of November. You can see a storm forming off the uh, in the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma off the, the eastern side of the Rockies, and snow breaks out on this particular run. It's a big storm system that would sweep through the central U.S., bring thunderstorms to the deep south, and a big Arctic high to come in behind it. In fact, this particular run puts a big amount of snow down. Anybody can go and view these, by the way. these aren't. This isn't a mysterious map. This is the Euro AI data. Puts a big swath of snow through the central U.S., Regardless of where it goes, okay, I'll show you the GFS here this morning as well. It has a bigger storm here across Kentucky, Ohio, right? Uh, the European data will go out to the, the 0Z run. Um, it didn't have much of a bigger storm in that time frame. Regardless of what models say in particular, the pattern supports uh, storms that have cold air and can produce snow. That's the general takeaway. What model has what and where right now? It's not, we're not in the range to discuss that. It doesn't matter. The signal's there is what I'm trying to get to y'all. Uh, the cold's coming and there's, the confidence is really increasing in that regard, uh, especially uh, when looking at the pattern drivers here for sure. Now, here's a look at the a couple of, of um, evidential pieces, if you will. What are we seeing to make us say this? Well, the Madden Julian oscillation heading into phases six, seven, and eight. Indications even out by mid-December, we are in phase eight of the MJO uh, and, and no indication of really coming out of it quickly. Um, and a lot of uh, data is, is, is indicative to this and leaning on this idea. Well, what does that mean? Well, the, 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 the connection, if you will, uh, the correlation is cold and stormy. And you can kind of see that here. All right. You can see phase seven, the suggestions of an active central U.S. Phase eight, the suggestions of an active central U.S. and deep south, too. Um, but nonetheless, both supporting cold in the east, uh, in the upper Midwest and then spilling east. Uh, and so we have that indication. The interesting part is, is that phase seven of the MJ also is uh, precursors to uh, significant warming events in the stratosphere. I wanted to show this map here from, from Grid Eater on Twitter. This is a great map. He put this together. He tweeted it out, um, hoping he doesn't mind that we use it, but he put it out for public, so I, I don't think he will. Uh, but it's a great illustration of the zonal winds at 10 millibars, indicating the weakening and displacement of the stratospheric polar vortex. And you can see as each run has come in, each new run has come in, look what we've done with the forecast here. Not only have we trended weaker with the vortex, but we've gone longer with a weaker vortex. And you can see it, just the obvious trend here, the writing on the wall, that the vortex would remain displaced and weaker all the way out through the new year. This is out through New Year's Eve. And this just indicating that um, we'll probably see a, 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 a bothered, uh, elongated source of cold source of winter longer, if you will. And you can kind of see this in the forecast suggestion from the European weeklies, because what it does is, is the tropospheric vortex is, is displaced completely and mainly across North America and Canada, 
All right. Yeah, and that's our vortex at around 500 millibars, which is what these maps are. But here's the big storm that ushers in the change week two. All right. Week three, we, we reinforce it. Okay. High latitude blocking starting to really establish itself. Week four, we see the trough primarily here, trough in the North Pacific, but high latitude blocking taking shape. And by week five, we have what we call this classic horseshoe style block trough in the east. This pattern here by week five, mid-December is, is really loaded for cold and winter weather. Week six, we see the same thing, the horseshoe style block going on. We're maintaining that EPO, that WPO, that negative AO, that negative NAO, that classic winter look that can deliver cold. And it's, it's on the data. It's stretched out through the six week period with what we're seeing in the stratosphere and the vortex. And all things considered, there's really no reason to go against this. In fact, to add to the upper level pattern and the high latitude blocking that we're seeing in the modeling, we're also seeing a strong indication of an active pattern continuing. Uh, multiple indications of multiple strong low pressure centers in the northern Pacific that may continue to offer up the ability to uh, bring multiple storm systems in through almost every five to seven days through the month of December, through the central U.S., Great Lakes, and up into the north and east. So nonetheless, the pattern uh, supports a, a very active look. Our December forecast right now that has been out since the 11th of November, indicating um, a very cold December for much of the country, much below normal temperatures. Uh, and by all intents and purposes, we continue to, to keep that thought process with above normal precipitation for the month of December as well, uh, leading to what we believe to be an active, probably one of the, the first Decembers in many years that will feature almost coast-to-coast -coast, uh, winter-like weather and the potential for a lot of snow uh, along with it. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.